The video camera performs a function similar to our eyes. The eye receives light and produces a signal to our brain. Now our brain translates that signal into images as light and dark, contrast and color, shape, etc. When there's more light, our pupil closes to allow us to see properly. If there's less light, our pupil opens. And all of that is done for us. It's not something we have to think about. We don't even notice when it's happening. We can choose to focus on an object or something behind it. Our brain just refocuses our eyes for us. In a video camera, none of this is automatic. We have to make adjustments for brightness, color, focus, depth of focus, all those sorts of things. All of this starts with light. Light is a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. It has properties of two different things, waves of energy and energy of vibrating particles. The particles are called photons, and we use both of these properties to describe the things we see light doing. The wave theory lets us explain the idea that light can be mixed and combined. The light we see as white is really made up of all colors or a combination of wavelengths of light. We can reverse that as we have here with this prism. The color of light is determined by its wavelength. And if we look back at the previous slide, shorter wavelength lights are blue or violet, where longer wavelength lights are red. The particle theory describes what happens when light hits objects. When photons hit something, they bounce off. We call that reflection. We see the object because some photons get reflected back and enter into our eyes. We see color because the object is only reflecting certain photons, those that match the surface color of the object. All other visible light is absorbed by the object. When photons hit a transparent object, only some are allowed through, depending on the color of the object. The object absorbs all other wavelengths. If the light hitting the transparency is white, it looks like the transparency is changing the color of the light. But it's not, it's just filtering out part of it. Transparencies like this are called filters or gels. They're used to control the color of light on a scene or entering the camera. There's a very special kind of filter called a neutral density filter. It absorbs all wavelengths equally, hence the name neutral. The Earth's atmosphere acts like a filter for sunlight. As the Earth rotates each day, the amount of atmosphere the sunlight has to travel through changes. Earlier and later in the day, the light has to travel through more atmosphere. The atmosphere filters more of the shorter, blue light. Longer wavelengths, the red light, gets through. This gives us a red sunrise and sunset. In the afternoon, the sun is directly overhead. The light passes through less atmosphere, so more of the shorter blue wavelengths get through, giving the sky the appearance of being blue. This is very important to remember, that the color of daylight changes throughout the day. There are some specific terms to know about describing light. The term hue means the actual tint or shade of the color of the light. The saturation is the amount of that color. And the brightness of the light is also known as the luminance of the light. To give a specific example of this, these two circles are exactly the same hue, but they are different colors because the one on the right is more saturated than the one on the left. Another way to think of this is mixing of wavelengths. The circle on the left has some other wavelengths mixed with the red. Because it has more wavelengths in it, it is closer to being white. There is another way to describe the hue of a mixed light. This is something called color temperature. Now, this is a very technical definition. It is the temperature to which a black object must be heated to emit a certain mixture of wavelengths. A really good example of this is an electric stove. The elements on electric stoves go from black to red to yellow as they're heated up. If you could heat it high enough, it would actually glow white hot. Color temperature is measured in degrees Kelvin. That's a special temperature scale measuring degrees above absolute zero. For us, the important thing here is the larger the number, the bluer the light. The smaller the number, the redder the light. We also describe light color temperature by the way it makes us feel psychologically. Even though blue light has a higher color temperature, we describe it as cool because of how it makes us feel. Blue is the color of snow and ice and cold water taps, so we say blue light is cool. Red is the color of fire and the sun and hot water taps, so we call reddish light warm. Remember, it's the way it makes us feel, not the size of the number. Blue is cool, but has a higher color temperature. There are some important color temperatures to know. Tungsten, or incandescent lights, are traditional light bulbs that get very hot. The light is 3200 degrees Kelvin. We describe this as a warm light. Traditional TV studio lights are tungsten lights. As we already discussed, daylight has a very wide range of colors depending on the time of day. 
But even at midday, the color temperature of daylight depends on clouds, whether you're in the shade, all sorts of things. To make things easier, film and television have standardized on a color temperature of 5600 degrees Kelvin for daylight. The color of an LED light is determined by the type of LED in the light. Some are fixed at 5600 degrees Kelvin or 3200 degrees Kelvin. And some are adjustable between 3200 Kelvin and 5600 Kelvin. Fluorescent lights come in a wide variety of color temperatures. The number given here is the standard for office buildings, hospitals, schools, etc. What color do you think you'll see this as? Fluorescent lights are bluish green. This is a very uncomfortable color. It can be used to make you feel ill or imply a hospital if your lighting is set. 